turns the EQ on the reverb. Delay time. Delay. Turn up the feedback. Turn up the feedback. Turn up the feedback. Wait, 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 wait. Pan the condenser to the left and the dynamic to the right. Lower the threshold. Raise the output. Wait, wait, wait. Set the frequency, frequency range. range. Welcome to the Lady Audio Radio Show. Hello there, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. We have two excellent guests for you today, one with more Mother Goddess and then with Smiliana. A couple of announcements before we get to the interviews. First is that I wanted to thank you, the listener, for downloading and sharing the shows, donating to Lady Audio, and for supporting the guests, too. It really means a lot to me and the artists we have on the show. So thank you for your support. You are supporting the real music industry, and it's what we all need right now to encourage more artists to stay creative and give us something good to listen to. The second announcement is if you are in the audio business, whether you're an audio engineer, someone who builds guitar effect stomp boxes, or if you're a musician who records your own music, send me an email. I would love to hear from you, and my email address is clara at ladyaudio.com. And now, on to the interviews. Our guest this week is Kame, otherwise known as More Mother Goddess, a very talented artist who is a very prolific writer with some really cool mixes. Kame, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. My first question is in regards to how you got started with writing music. Will you please tell us about your history with music? Yeah, I mean, um, my family was deeply, you know, involved in just being lovers of music. They took me to all the concerts, stuff that I wanted to see, and also, like, stuff they wanted to see, and, you know, had me sing along to songs and stuff like that. So that just kind of, like, you know, birthed of love of just wanting to write my own songs to sing them as well, you know, so... um, you know, I would just write, like, you know, little poems, little songs throughout grade school and then really start uh, writing on paper until maybe after high school. Anything that I was, like, writing was just, or coming up with in grade school was just, like, a freestyle, you know, like, on the top of my head, not nothing that I, like, sat down for a while and planned out. That's cool. That's cool. So how did you get started with recording your music? And what did you start out with? Yeah, um, I was in bands before. um, So just just as a vocalist, and actually, um, as a bass player, too. So I was doing stuff like that recording in small studios from like uh, music shops in the basement, to people's houses you know, different things like that. But when it comes to me working on the solo project, when I started out, I just had an iPad and a pair of headphones. Wow, that's pretty cool. Where did the name More Mother Goddess come from? What's the story behind it? Well, it's just, um, you know, it wasn't too too much of a, a deep story. You know, you know, some things just like, come and you're not sure exactly why just yet you know Mm -hmm. it just just like really just like came to me and then I started thinking about um who I am as an artist what type of artist I am and I'm really you know an artist that's just about honoring what was before me you know so and things that will always remain you know so I'm honoring you know the mother You know, I'm not a mother myself, but it's it's important to understand how we all are mothers in different certain, you know, circumstances. And I put more instead of calling myself black mother goddess is just because 
I want to go before things. I want to go before the language change, you know. I don't want to be so stuck on, uh, you know, with the so-called founding fathers and all these people uh you know imperialists basically what they called me you know it's all about going back you know paying respect you know as far as far as you can you know mm. and the same thing with the goddess you know it's all just um and i just recently dropped the goddess actually now i'm just going off of more mother but um same thing you know i'm paying homage before you know, before the mother, the goddess, like, you know, yeah, it's all about honoring, you know, with the name. So that's what that's about. Cool. Um, on the album, Occult Scorpio Technologies, and on some of your other works, the songs end abruptly. And, you know, just on a personal note, I think it's, you know, very different from what others might do and that would be like fading out or creating an ending of some kind and that was one of the reasons why I liked your style and I just wanted to know why did you choose to go that route rather than fading out or doing something else yeah I mean um I'm you know I'm just a product of of my memes you know I feel like that's you know that's where people are like um I never thought about fading out, you know, you know, I just, yeah. I just never thought about that things, you know, slowly as you start to learn more, you're like, Oh, well maybe I can do this or maybe I should do that. But, um, it's just something that I wasn't thinking about. You so, know? so it wasn't uh, like a, a premeditated, uh, you know, idea that you were, or um, yeah. it was just the way it came out. Yeah. Like, I believe, like, maybe two of, like, the beginning songs that I've from the first EP, like, fades out. 
But that was just kind of like a new thing that I learned on the program. I was like, oh, cool. This could fade out. But, <laughs> you know, I didn't, it wasn't so important to me to make sure I kept doing it. You know, I was more concerned with like the material that I had to get out to put on the song, you know. So, and back then, just using my iPad, is it's pretty difficult to gather all the things that I want to gather within the song. It, it's really hard using the particular program that I'm using because everything has to be sampled based, even my own voice, even anything. So it's a lot of work to be doing that and then to be thinking about, you know, what the end is, you know? Like, <laughs> for a while, like, when the song just, like, did what it was going to do. Sometimes, to me, I thought the song was over, but it'll be a couple more, like, kick drums that'll come at the end, and that was that's an accident, but I just kept it, you know? It's just, like, I got to learn how to end better, you know? <laughs> and I think that's kind of, like, been the journey of me, like, learning what this thing called the ending even means, you know? <laughs> mm. Cool. So when you're putting a song together, um, do you start recording it right away or do you have an idea and write it first and then start recording it? Um, it's different ways, you know. Sometimes I was just talking to a friend about recording synth and he said that he has to play it out first before he records. And I'm like, I just once I got everything plugged up, I just start playing and recording. There's no like pre, you know, thing that I do. It's just like, get the sounds that you're going to get. Those are going to be the sounds, you know? So sometimes, you know, I'll come up with some type of melody in my head. And if I can keep it, I'll use that. Or there could be someone that's like speaking to me, you know, like for some reason, I feel like I need to, you know, take some some poem from Sonia Sanchez or Angela Davis and do something about it. Like sometimes that like certain spirits call out to me and I have to do something with it, you know, but um, yeah, it's pretty organic. It's pretty just like what it is is what it's going to be kind of thing, you know? That's cool. And besides the really good mixes, um, cause you, you definitely have an ear for balance. Um, you also, create works for certain causes and I was just wondering if you could please explain about one or two of the works and um, the causes that they're associated with yeah well um, one of my performance pieces was called 14 hours and it was like a sonic protest sonic activism if you will of me trying to combat the violence that happens Every minute, you know, every second throughout the 14 hours, you know, there's horrifying statistics that say every nine seconds someone is sexually assaulted or a domestic violence case happens, you know, or every every minute, 26 people or, you know, it's just like all these horrifying statistics that no one is talking about. But it's this warfare and terror that women are going through every day. You know, so that's what, you know, 14 hours was about, you know, and I'm actually gearing up to do another piece, which would be called the resurrection of the potter's fields. And it's basically, you know, um, I'm trying to recall the spirits that are buried in these unmarked graves in these places that are now, you know, condos have been built upon them or so-called city parks have been built on top of them, you know? I mean, I'm trying I'm trying to sonically in my works, you know, make them a tool, not just something you listen to and dance or, you know, whatever, how people want to fetishize music. I mean, this is something that's actually being sent out into the world, into the space, you know, meant to agitate meant to protect, you know, meant to br bring a sense of healing.
sense of, you know, protest to help people fight back. So, you know, those are, you know, two things. In my um, collective Black Quantum Futurism, we did several things. Uh, We did an EP honoring Octavia Butler. We did an EP honoring um, Sandra Bland. We did an EP honoring Marcus Garvey. You know, and we we don't just stop at, you know, honoring them. We're with the Marcus Garvey piece. We're looking at this, you know, we're looking at the ship that he wanted to create. We're looking at the, you know, um, you know, what's that mean in this day and age? What does that ship represent before he even decided to build a ship or to set out, you know, on the Black Star Line? You know, we we're trying to think before and into the future with this stuff is we're trying to make it practical and take it into our own hands and also give it for you know have it be in the hands of the people you know that need it so and then uh speaking of your live music you have a tour coming up and i wanted to ask you because uh this was one of the things we discussed previously how are your live shows different from your recorded works? Oh, yes. It's very different. My live show features mainly vocals, me rapping, singing, and screaming on top of the soundscapes that I produce. So um, what's online is just the soundscapes without the words. But there's soundscapes that are that I perform with live and that I have been performing with for the past few years that are not on Bandcamp or SoundCloud. Okay, so, so like, basically, what you have up, I've only really explored your Bandcamp. So, uh, what you have up there are kind of the soundscapes that you use for your live shows. But you're not just playing those you're actually it's like a it's like a full-on performance is that right yes yes yeah, a full-on performance so actually i'm not playing those songs on the band camp live oh, okay you can't catch you can't catch any of that stuff live i mean maybe i'll play you know i'll mix it with a newer soundscape or something but besides that you can't you know that's mainly stuff that i'm able to do at home you know i wasn't able to record vocals at home you know I wasn't able to you know like I said a lot of the stuff I had to do I had to sample my own self to put the vocals on to the track you know so it's like I wasn't able to go perform live and record it in my own home until Mm -hmm. just recently so um, that's why it's been such a different contrast but I just didn't want to wait until I was able to record that way you know I wanted to just keep learning and experimenting that was, you know that's really the band camp is me experimenting how to do something to get out what's inside of me to get out a message you know that I've been doing the research on and shaping myself into a certain way I want to get that message out but um yeah, I wasn't able to for so long. So um, now I'm finally at a place where people are going to be able to see the full circle of what I'm trying to do. Right now, they're only getting a, a partial, you know, they're only getting a, half of the picture. Which is already a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It definitely comes through in your music. Um But I wanted to ask you, so what is it that you were using on the iPad that, uh, what was the application that you were using that didn't allow you to, uh, you know, put down vocals? Um, It's a program called Beatmaker. Oh, okay. And I'm sure maybe other people have figured out how to do it, you know, like I'm saying, I'm not looking at any tutorials or any type of video or nothing. I'm just getting on it and making mistakes and trying to come out with a product, <clears throat> excuse me, and try to come out with, you know, a finished product that is getting the message I want across and the feeling and textures, you know, as best as I can. Okay. And then in addition to the tour, I think you said that you have another new album coming out. 
Yes, I have the album, the album, the one that I've been working on for so, you know, basically the entire time of, of More Mother has been trying to get to this place of creating this album. And it's coming out um, September 18th. Wow. Okay, so y- y- it's already completed as far as the songs go or, or as far as yep. the recording goes? Recording, everything is done. Okay. Okay. And um, so that was, say that date again, September? 18th. September 18th. Okay. Okay. Cool. I'll be on the lookout for that. And when it's released, is it going to be on Bandcamp, SoundCloud? Where is it going to be? Um, I'm not really sure. Uh, it's going to be um, on the Don Giovanni website, I'm sure. And I'm sure it'll be on iTunes and all of those, you know, open networks okay. or, you know, music networks. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So what would you say to someone who is just starting out with recording their own music? Uh, I would say, you know, it's hard, you're, you know, um, definitely put together you know, a simple budget, you know, that you can, um, work towards, you know, and the main three things are going to be, you know, your mic, your interface and some type of computer or, um, iPad to record onto, you know, when I say something like that, I mean, I know I could say some motivational quote of don't let no one tell you this or, you know, believe in yourself, whatever. But I think that's important because I'm someone that wasn't privileged to know this gear. You know what I mean? What this gear meant, you know? And and is it affordable or is it not? Like, you can get an interface for 50 bucks or cheaper, you know? Like, I, that's important information that I would have wanted, wanted to know. You know, you can get a good mic for 60 to to $100, you know, that can set you up to go you know, get you to the next step of your recording life, you know, and yeah, just, just things like that, you know, yeah, that's, that is actually affordable. <clears throat> right, exactly. And I wanted to ask you, cause you mentioned it earlier, but I forgot to ask you earlier, but, um, you said you played bass. Yeah. Bass what? and drums in a, in a band called, uh, girls dressed as girls. <laughs> and you can find the music there's music online girls dressed as girls and we and I created that see I was in a band called the mighty paradox and it was uh another woman uh Rebecca we were the two uh lead singers of the group but we couldn't tour we wanted to tour what was this thing called touring you know and we were not able to um so we said hey let's Let's play instruments, you know, and go on tour ourselves. And that's basically what we did. We got a, we had a third member playing guitar and that was it. We went on tour like for six years, you know, every year we just kept going out and meeting more people. At first it was hard, you know, when you're not, when you don't know where the cool kids are, you know, touring is kind of like a private privilege group. You know, it can be really easy. I mean, it's, it's, hard, it's hard work touring, but it can be much more easier if you're in with the end crowd. Right. So with this tour that you have coming up now, yeah, it was you had a lot more planning put into it, I'm guessing. Um. Yeah, well, you know, it's kind of like what they say, good relationships are important, you know. Staying true to yourself is important. I think I said... This, this kind of tour, I feel like, was in motion from last year, you know? Like, I'm going to uh, Rotterdam at this amazing place where I was last year and help to curate a festival with my partner from the Afro Futures Affair, who was heading the, uh, the curation. Um, and so we just formed a great relationship with the people at Worm Rotterdam. And so now I'm able to go back and have a residency, you know, and 
because of staying in contact and with people that listen to my music, I'm able to play a couple of shows while I'm there. And then um, from touring and meeting people in San Francisco, you know, there's a great group there, um, Raskin Records, and a lot of the musicians that are, you know, involved and hang out with them, I'm able to play the San Francisco Electronic Music Fest, you know. So I'm a type of, you know, artist that I'm still not 100% in the end crowd, but I try to make the most and be, you know, I don't want to say, you know, well, just be honest when I meet people and, you know, be genuine. So that's, you know, that's how I'm able to do these tours. Believe me, like, it's, you know, it's because of in real life meetings, you know, face to face meetings. <laughs> yeah. And I think I may have missed this, but what is the name of the new album coming out? Fetish Bones. Fetish Bones. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I'll also be out in Seattle and Portland um, for the West Coast kids out there. Where can people go to find your tour dates and where you're going to be? Um, I'm going to announce the tour dates soon. Um, it'll be on every one of my social media outlets, um, more mother at Tumblr, more mother at Twitter and on Facebook. But, um, I'm hoping to get some press for the album so they could also announce tour dates to get the, you know, the word out to the places that I'm going to be visiting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for joining me today, Kame. You know, I really appreciate it. And I know that you're super, super busy. It was a little tough trying to get you to get on the show. Because um, I remember it was, a, it was a couple months ago when we, I first contacted you. And, um, you know, with the tour and the album and everything, it's, it's just probably been a whirlwind. Yes, I am just trying to, you know get as organized as possible so I can grow from this situation, you know, because it's, you know, it's only going to be more shows and, you know, I'm not going to stop creating, you know, so just trying to get better at it, you know, on all different levels. And thank you so much for even, you know, considering for me to be on this show. It really means a lot. Like I, you know, haven't done many of these, so I definitely want to continue and, you know, this is the this is a great first step. So thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. And as soon as you have those tour dates, just let me know and I'll post them on my website too um, uh, with this recording. Okay, cool. And stay in touch with me, you know, and hopefully you can catch a show when I'm out on the West Coast sometime. Yeah, I hope so. And vice versa, because you never know, maybe one day I might head to the East Coast. Hey, well, you know, Philadelphia, we got a community space here. We're doing a lot of, like, great, interesting things. And, you know, we're always having a discussion with it. So it's not just something, just a show, you know. We're always trying to dive, dive deeper into what we are doing and what it means. So you're more than welcome to come by. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. Today we welcome to the show Smiljana Nikolic, also known as Neither. From minimalistic to classical sounds mixed into industrial, Neither does a fantastic job of capturing feelings. Neither, welcome to the show. Hey, hello. <laughs> Hi to everyone. <laughs> Hi. Uh, I'm sorry, thank you for, for this lovely invitation. Oh, sure, no problem. It's a pleasure to have you here. It's always cool to meet someone who does all the recordings and mixing of their music. Can you speak a little bit about how, or actually, hold, hold on. Can you speak a little bit about why you like to record and mix your music all by yourself? Yes, of course. I mean, uh, I, I, uh, there is a very simple reason why I'm doing that. When I started producing music, I, I tried to do that like with other people, like to, to do the arrangement and composition and give other guys to, to do that. And somehow they uh, were trying too much to, to make it uh, cleaner 
in a statical way or to, to mix it in a way which was not um, uh, fitting well with my uh, first idea of how I want to sound get I mean how I, I want to sound the, the whole thing and um, then I I said like okay maybe I should try to reach that sound which I have in my head by myself and um, I, I, I tried several times and I was quite ashamed of the stuff I was doing I was not really willing to show them but then um, uh, I was doing that further like by myself and uh, I, I found that kind of aesthetical expression or like this kind of sound I want to have and yes uh, even when, if, when I think that I would uh, do it another way and maybe ask someone else and then I sit and, and discuss a bit with people then I see that they would like to change the, the, the reverb or they would uh, put less or more or clean the drums or do some stuff which I don't want to have there mm -hmm. and yeah, that's that's how I turned into the uh, like uh, a lonely wolf there in a, in a process. But actually, I enjoy it. <laughs> that's cool. And when you're mixing, do you use studio monitors or do you just mix with headphones? Well, I I have some studio uh, monitors. They are S in ear eight uh, inches, and uh, I don't like them very much. So I borrowed some Genelex. Um, and I did that with, with the small Genelec uh, loudspeakers and I also have opportunity in a university to use Adam um, monitors and these are quite well, I got used on them they have like, very cruel and dry like feedback so to say, I, what I'm getting from them it's really really like no makeup and this is like I, I think we got used one on each other but I prefer actually these uh, headphones I'm wearing at the moment and these are biodynamic uh, DT770 I, I like them very much I know them well right. so this is what what uh, is sometimes is with headphones and sometimes with with monitors so it just depends yeah yeah yeah, it is. Uh, I also have some, uh, com let's say, low-end computer monitors, like uh, from Panasonic, and they have really, really nice bass response. Mm -hmm. And I like to check on them either. And I have some really uh, old AKG headphones, which I don't like at all, because I have a piercing on my ears, and they are just like squashing my ears, and I don't feel comfortable. But they have completely different response on, on the bass and, and uh, um, like highs, so I like also to check on them. So you reminded me, yeah, this, this is sometimes part of the process when I'm not too lazy, let's say. <laughs> like yeah. To, <laughs> yeah, I, know, I think said, that too. Yeah, as you said, it's 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 a big work, like pile of work. If you are, but I like it actually. I'm not complaining. It's just like that. Sometimes I'm forgetting all all these possibilities. Yeah, well, you've got some really great vocal takes. Um, very different. What is the mic that you're using on your vocals? Uh, I usually use um, SM57 from Sure, and um, AKG. Um, no, uh, Audio Technica, sorry, Audio Technica uh, 2020, and uh, these are also like Audio Technica is like maybe ninety five dollars or something like that, Mike. So they're not some high end mics, and I don't use them in an orthodox way. You know, like I like sure because sometimes I'm yelling, so I need some kind of a dynamical mic for that purposes. But um, mm, like with Audio Technica, you can't do that. It's very sensitive with like really nice big membrane and condenser mic. So you need to be a bit more careful. And um, sometimes I'm borrowing the, the, but that didn't happen. Like I don't have these songs yet in a SoundCloud. Like I borrowed some vintage like coal microphone from 40s or 50s, some Mercury mic and... Um, I try to record one cover of Nine Inch Nails with, with that one, so that will be released soon. And then you can hear that weird aesthetic of, of <laughs> old radio mic or something like that. It's it's just like 
um, yes, I, I'm lot experimenting actually uh, a lot with uh, with uh, position of mic actually that it is, and I like to do things in a wrong way because I like the results you get from from like <laughs> what book does say. Then I I usually don't do that. I'm just trying to find some way that my ear is going to uh, appreciate and. Uh, that's how it happens then. So what do you mean by by the wrong way? Give, give me an example. What do you what do you mean? Well, for example, I was recording last summer for, for this coming album uh, some very old piano, a friend of mine. And, you know, people usually take Neumanns. We have it in our university. I could borrow it or shops or some really high-end mics to, to do that. But then... I was not having opportunity to do that, and then I was like, "Oh, what the heck! I mean, I have a, I have a really nice piano here. I would like to play it. So I will just put the the Shure uh, 57 like uh, <laughs> beside the piano and record the keys. And like you can even hear my fingers and everything. But I was really spending like two or three hours before I got the 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 sound uh, that I like." though from the mic which is not at all for for that purpose so that's what i mean when i say or like when i'm singing like i instead of whisper of of, of really yelling in a mic sometimes i'm going to put it very close to my mouth and like uh without uh or i don't know like without pop uh shoots we call it oh, here yeah, like the, you know, without the pop filter the, yeah, pop filter and something okay. like that. And then I have some really nice um, accents in some places. Or I'm just like very gentle with with, with mic, uh, which is not made to be like I'm like almost whispering in a mic, which is dynamic mic, but recording very close. And then I'm having some, I don't know, I call it maybe brilliance or I don't know, in a, in a recording, uh, even though I should maybe use some other type of mic. So... Or that's what I mean when I say the wrong way of, okay. of doing it. Okay. So those those microphones that you have now, uh, just those two, the Sure Fifty Seven, and then you said the AKG or no, you said no, Audio Technica. Yeah, Audio Audio okay. Technica. Yes, exactly. All right. Um, but you weren't always. So yeah, always... these are, uh, and I have uh, done some recordings in earlier days when I didn't have them yet um, with some zoom like really really old zoom recorder and uh, it was like really funny experience to do it with it because um, um, it is field recorder and uh, people are usually doing soundscapes with it or something like that and I just ignored the fact that it's done mainly for such a purpose so I was recording my vocals so uh, in the same way with 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 uh, with uh, like uh, this old zoom I think it's h20 type like it's I mean I think you can still find it you know in a market but yeah I have yeah, a, I have an h4n and um, I, it's it's really great for you know capturing um, when it's late at night and I don't want to turn on all of the music stuff and and my computer's already shut down or something I'll just grab the H4n and I'll just put down my little guitar idea or whatever it is and um, that's mainly what I use it for but uh, I have recorded a few practices with my band in uh, a couple of years ago I we were using it um, to listen back to our rehearsals and refine what we were doing and stuff. We never released any of it, but it sounded good, you know. Yeah, it, 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 these takes are in a way sincere because you know you uh, you're making it as a a draft, for example. Like you say, okay, this is not the final take. I will record my voice now with with field recorder, but then I, I uh, regret sometimes like to to uh, dismiss them, to drop them off. Like, I'm like, oh no, this is very sincere and it, it, it captured the emotion. So who cares? I, I want to have it no matter. And it's clean, like there is no some uh, side uh, noises or whatever. 
sometimes I was doing that and I still have some songs which are completely done with with this kind of recorder. So was I that, like that it. song that song I just want to sleep was that the one one of the ones Okay, I'm going to yeah. play a sample of that. to compliment you because I really enjoyed your choice of reverb and delay on a newer song called A Black Hole Too Far. And I wanted to ask you, what did you use on that? Well, thank you for, for that. <laughs> I, you, you wouldn't believe I just used the, uh, like, because I'm producing and using uh, Logic Pro as my, uh, like, working platform. And I just use the, the the basic plugin for reverb you get, like, with uh, Logic Pro 9. And I was just, like, playing a lot with, uh, like, presets. Uh, but, like, I have default uh, setup, and then I'm just, like, working a lot with uh, pre-delay. some equalizing there directly in a uh, like reverb preset to get some nice uh, 
space respawn and I mean nice the one I am aiming to like <laughs> yeah but yeah. but that's, uh, in the end as uh, you said you like it so I'm glad that there is someone who, who <laughs> liked it as well <laughs> yeah it, uh, it reminds me there was this meditation room that I went to one time and it was made out of um concrete and it was it was rather big I, I'd say about 10 10 or 15 feet and it was big and round it was um, it had a dome shape on top and it was just it was very reflective and it reminded me of something similar to that being in that completely round room um, but it's a very interesting sound. If you ever have a chance to get inside one of those little, I don't, I don't know what they're called. Um, I think there is a special name for it. But anyway, um, that's what it reminded me of because it's very, it's very reflective. That reverb that you're okay. using there. I would like very much to 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 experience something <laughs> like that live <laughs> without any presets and and plugins. <laughs> Um, when we spoke previously, you mentioned that you have a lexicon, but did you mean a real lexicon or the plugin? No, 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 the the, the plugin. Okay. Um, I I I don't owe any kind of uh, yet <laughs> like, like hardware, <laughs> hardware like analog or whatever. Like it's, everything is software. I'm like uh, uh, very young in this uh, profession. <laughs> Yeah. So to say, uh, so no, it was just a plugin, actually. Okay, that's cool. It's, uh, and I'm not using it uh, quite often. I, I was just like browsing through my sessions to see because uh, we were like when we were when we met last time, we were just like um, discussing a bit some some points for for like I mean some stuff about my work and so and then I was like thinking what. Well, where I'm using actually this lexicon and actually I was really happy when I when I got it and used it a lot but lately I was just like using this like out of laziness I guess this uh, uh, logic stuff and you know I got used to to, to try to get uh, as much as possible from very very uh, low end equipment uh, and um, because I, I that's what that was all that I had in one moment. And then it was like, okay, I have idea of sound. Now I have to figure out how it works. So right. sometimes it's possible, sometimes it's not. But <laughs> lately um, I was doing it with logic stuff mainly and with waves. Yeah, these these are my like, uh, I like the waves plugins like at the moment a lot. Yeah, I like them too. Um your single that you're gonna that your single has come out, but the album hasn't come out. But um, the single that's called Mind, Fuck, it has yes. a very industrial sound, and yet there's also an organic element with piano. Um, and I was just wondering if you could talk a bit more about your musical background and how you came to blend musical styles like industrial and classical. Okay, well. Um... I am classically trained musician. I, I did like master in uh, music, like in flute. Beside that, I, I play piano and, and guitar. Uh, and uh, at the moment, I am like doing my composition studies. I'm finishing actually. So I grew up uh, surrounded by classical music influence. I played a lot in orchestras and in chamber ensembles and uh, as a soloist okay, also. And uh, I guess this is where it comes from, this like classical vibe. And uh, beside that, I was following everything possible, like like let's say from pop music. I don't like this, you know, um, kind of of generalizing what belongs where. And but like from new wave, uh, metal, grunge, uh, industrial. Drum and bass, trends, um, trip hop. I don't know what, what, but like, until I was growing up, like this, this was like all mixing into one. And I guess these all influences. Like I remember when I was a kid, I wanted to be Nick Cave, and like uh, I was dream, 
<laughs> dreaming to have my own uh, band and or or to be like I don't know David Bowie or like some I don't know I, I just wanted to be everything which makes me so happy and to do this stuff that these people which I admire do and then um, like I was never trying until I was uh, starting my composition studies and uh, then uh, then it was like uh, like joining the experiences from uh, my work with classical composition. I say classical, but I'm not composing. Uh, the, the, I'm like doing some avant-garde music, or I, I call it here like kapute music, which would be, which would mean like broken music or whatever. Like uh, with a lot of influences of Ligeti and Stravinsky, but again, in like filtrated in some way to have like essence of my being there and it's like really chaotic so I guess these stuff that were like so important for me over the years uh, melted in one and this is like that now the consequence like what I enjoyed I am now like somehow radiating and that's why you can hear this piano <laughs> sound appearing there like coming from some strange uh, artifacts of my childhood and, and time like in practicing or like listening classical concerts I don't know I would explain it as as that I don't have any other like more um, grounded explanation no it's great because um, it's one of the older songs on your SoundCloud called night for flute and piano the flute playing on that I wondered if that was you or if it was somebody else but it's you both piano and flute to yeah. me <laughs> because I, I overdubbed that like it was like first me playing piano then I w was recording flute and uh, because it was I had to apply for some competition for composition and I had to do it like by myself because all my colleagues were in holidays and instead of having someone else playing piano for that purpose it was just like me okay now I'm recording piano part yeah. and then I yeah, that, that's both uh, me. Yeah, yeah, I like, I like, it seems, I, I mean, I, I could be wrong, but, and I can edit this out if you want, but what I wanted to say is that it seems like you opt in or you prefer to have the feeling of, it's almost like when I listen to that song, because I just listened to it this morning, Night for Flute and Piano, when I listen to that flute, there are some parts that seem like it almost seems like there's like there's just one t one part. It seems like your breath isn't blowing through like like it's it's there and then it just kind of drifts away. And it's almost like almost just your breath. And it seems like a lot of people would take that out and redo the take. But for some reason, there's this element of the feeling that's going through that part right there where you're playing it and you and you keep that in there. And I noticed that through a, a number of your pieces is that you tend to keep that feeling in there as opposed to, oh, let's do this over again. And I think it's similar to what you were saying about all I have is this really nice piano, but all I have is a 57 microphone. So I'm going to spend hours trying to find the right place to put this microphone and then get that feeling across just with with this uh 
little piece. And um, I think that in recording, when we start gathering up a lot of uh, equipment and we start gathering up, you know, better plugins and this and that and better microphones and everything, we kind of forget that um, if we did just only have a, one microphone and one instrument or, you know, whatever it is, just like the native plugins in, in Logic, that we can get that sound. And it is a lot. Like, I'd say most of it is about that mic placement and also your performance. Um, because if if you don't have that performance with a, you know, whether you're playing piano, flute or guitar, singing, whatever it is, when you capture the performance, it almost seems to not matter what equipment you're using. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, totally. And you, you, you really figure it out to me. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, it's it, it, it is so because um, I uh, I don't know. I, I I prefer to hear that also. Like when I'm listening to other people music, you know, it's. Uh, emotion in a painting or uh, like in, in a piece that captures me and when I'm doing these takes I'm doing it and then in a moment I want to hear what is happening and if it hits me somewhere and reminds me on the things that were triggering me at all to start doing this piece then I think I'm on a good way like I, I'm like walking in the right direction and that's why I, I prefer to keep it like and meanwhile I I learned a lot of about uh, like mixing and editing and I could make it really like uh, shiny and glittery and like like drop out all this stuff but uh, it's actually not what I'm doing because I also have some uh, people I, uh, and I, uh, with whom I like to uh, show the stuff I'm doing and if they recognize that there is something happening inside which is like some kind of emotional level vibrant or whatever then I, I prefer to keep it because that's the way how I'm communicating with with people I'm not very good with words or with some other mediums but actually I am trying to communicate my feelings through the the music that's the only way I, I, I can do it I mean maybe it sounds pathetic or I don't know no so nine so 90s or 70s or I don't know but that's <laughs> who I am <laughs> No, I and I like I like the name of is the name of the album where Mind and and some of the other yeah. songs. Are, the name of the album is going to be Alter Ego Outburst. Is that right? Yes. Ah, uh, that's excellent. I, I love that name. 
<laughs> because I'm really like uh, there is a really really nice word here uh, like um, yeah verzweifelt like confused uh, like about what I am what I'm actually uh, doing because I am in the same time noise musician and it's on a completely other end of the the story like it's uh, like just playing with a cable and 50 hertz is like this ground sound and like producing music and doing some live performances so I really appreciate noise yeah. <laughs> and uh, on the other side I decided to to do some call it pop stuff so you know it's not it doesn't go together like hand by hand but mm. I'm trying to make them work uh in the same like uh, medium, like to to put them together, to live like to make them live together in one one thing, because they are both so important to me. Yeah, yeah. I mean you're well rounded in the musical sense because you you do, you you. But the the one element that is a thread that goes through all of it is that you tend to capture feelings. A, a certain feeling as opposed to um, uh, just getting a message across or something like you really try to like you were saying like without language try to capture a feeling and share that and I think that's a, a really um, it was one of the things that made me contact you was was because of that because I, I was hearing this kind of Hey, there's something else going on here. Like I can, hear, it isn't just another electronic, you know, person out there because there are like thousands of people doing electronic music. But this was this was definitely different. So, besides all that stuff, I just wanted to say thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show. I really appreciate it. I know that you're really busy right now with school and getting prepared for finals and stuff. So I really appreciate you taking the time to come on here neither. No, thank you so much for inviting me and uh, for understanding the, 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 the points there. I like this, this means very much to me mm -hmm. when I bump on someone who, who just never uh, had the opportunity to get me knowing like in a, in a, a like real life or spend some time with me and and know me but uh, yeah we never met and you figured out like uh, <laughs> that there is something that there is something behind these old plugins and stuff happening like this is really a big stuff always for for a musician I think yeah definitely 